idea of what we've got going here. We have a pistol grip handbrake. Down below, we have a little button. That's for your high beam, low beam setup. We have a clutch pedal, brake pedal, accelerator. And one of the things people wouldn't be used to is this starter pedal is actually above that accelerator. That's where you start the car. Right here we have a signal stat that's been added because signal lights weren't original to the car. So we've added that. And hiding kind of behind it, we have a tan knob there. That's actually the overdrive, so you can pull the overdrive out. I usually leave it engaged. Other than that, we have a standard three on the tree with reverse for a control. And we have some other controls in the 1930s. They didn't label them, so you have to kind of know which control is which. Right down here I actually have my choke. Over here I have a hand throttle or the poor man's cruise control. So to start this car, all we got to do is step that clutch in. We'll turn our key over to the on position. And we have equipped the car with a, an electric boost pump just in case. It's been run today, so I don't even need any choke. I'm not even going to need to set that particular hand throttle. And I'll just step on the starter pedal, and she's going to start right up. Then the car is running. That's about as easy a car to start as you can ever get. You just have to know what controls what. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this car for a little ride. Release the parking brake, and we'll go for a little drive here. Now we're driving in an area called the Granite Dells. It's kind of a spectacular place. It happens to be where our house is in Arizona. And we have a kind of spectacular car to drive. Now I'm going to be signaling by hand. That's the only way I can signal. Signals do not have self-canceling, etc. And as you might notice here, there's no way for me to tell which gear I'm in except to know where I am. It's a common H pattern, and in 1939, this first year, they really put it up on the steering column used to be 1938 was still on the floor. I could have gotten a 1938 on the floor version if I would ordered it that way in 1939. So standard three on the tree with reverse. What we're going to do is we're going to turn right here onto a very busy road and we're going to run up through a roundabout and come back to give you an idea of how the car performs. She is equipped with overdrive and I'll be starting her out in first obviously then we'll go to second and then I'm going to release my foot from the accelerator pedal and we'll be in second over. That's a really good gear for climbing a hill like we're going to climb. Also allows us to have effectively a passing gear and pretty fast acceleration in an old car like this. So here comes the last one in line, so we'll get going. You can kind of hear sometimes with the supercharger, but it sounds like a whine. So it has a little jet engine sound to it on top of everything. We're in second gear now. I'm going to release the pedal. There's the shift in the second over. So that's automatic. A couple of flyweights fly out and the planetary system takes us up in the second over. And we're already going 50 miles per hour up this hill in a 1939 car. Just like that. It didn't take but a few seconds. When we get to the top, I'll shift into the third over. We'll press and shift. She's now running in third over. You can hear the RPM on the engine drop way down. So she's getting very good gas mileage, but she's in third over. You can run her all the way up to over 100 miles an hour, although that really won't show on the instrumentation quite that way because Graham had a built-in lesser rate on that speedometer where we'll read about 17% low just for that. Plus, there's an overdrive scale down there that we have to read. So you have to know what you're looking at to understand your speed, but you can always time it, which we've actually done, and this particular car will go as fast as I've told you. So we're going to come on up to this roundabout, we'll turn the car around, bring it back down the hill, and you get a little idea of how she does handle. Very easy to drive, she's got dual ratio steering on her, that means that when I'm hardly moving, she's a lot easier to steer than one thinks she'd be. It's a precursor to power steering. It doesn't have a power steering pump, but that dual ratio does make a big difference. I'll have to slow down and wait for a couple people here. Roundabout, back to first, and start her out. The steering wheel is quite large, and it's what's known as a banjo steering wheel. Very popular in the late 1930s. Normally an optional steering wheel. The custom supercharger was equipped with it as part of the custom equipment group. This same steering wheel could have been found on a Buick in that year. Are the little controls we have here? We have a cigarette lighter, our ashtray of course, 
And we're going to go second over again. So there's our second over. And in fact, I've got a third over here. We've got a windshield wiper control right there in the center. Vacuum controlled windshield wipers. The clock was also part of the custom equipment group. I had the clock converted to quartz because these old clocks are pretty well worn out and it makes it work nice all the time. Other controls, air conditioning down here. If I want to open the vent, now we got the air conditioning going. So, a lot simpler than modern air conditioning. Doesn't take free on. Kind of nice. And other controls, as I said, that's our choke. This is our hand throttle. This is for our lights on the interior. And our headlight side is over here. But you have to know all that. You'll see there's nothing down there to tell you. You also have to know your heater control is right over here. And we have a button down here for our electric blocking gas cap. But again, nothing's labeled, so if you don't know where this stuff is, you don't know how to operate your car. It did come with a very nice manual to tell you what all those things were about. But this is very common in the 1930s to actually not have the controls labeled. I guess they thought humans were more intelligent then. So that's kind of a nice thing. Nowadays we've got everything marked with little pictograms. But no, 1930s, you better know what you're doing or you're not going to be able to operate your car. So we're going to drive back on in by our house now, come off of here, been going 50 miles an hour. As you can see, the car is reasonably quiet, not quiet like modern cars, even though it's so-called streamlining, it's not streamlined like we're used to. Even though it has a fair amount of sound deadening in it, originally they didn't have the level of sound deadening we've got in modern vehicles. So we happen to share a resort entrance here. We're coming in through this area, and all the rocks around you are what's called Dell's granite, nice pink granite, all actually from volcanic activity in the past. We'll drive her back into the driveway here and shut her off, and hope you've enjoyed the idea of seeing what a 1939 Gram is like. And if you thought it was really interesting and ever want to get involved with the Gram Owners Club, you can go to Gram Page. And that's gram-paige.com on the internet and become involved with the Gram Page Owners Club. And hope you had a good time learning about this car.